it will make a funny noise. Recording in progress. Um, and we'll share the screen and um, we shall go into our little presentation here, which, um, as I say, it is the anniversary of um, the Armistice Day in, 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 in 1918, uh, 103 years ago. So we have moved from uh, World War I um, being something that, that exists, however tenuously, in the living memory to, to something that is part of history. No survivors of World War I left, no, no one who, who served uh, in World War I left, a, a, a few civilians left perhaps um, uh, now in, into their um, 11th decade. Um, one of those strange facts that the people that you see in this photo, um, they are closer uh, in time to the Battle of Waterloo than they are to the present day. Uh, the, the, the Armistice Day, is, it, the original Armistice Day is, is now almost exactly halfway uh, between the Battle of Waterloo and the present. And, and, and that perhaps puts it into some sort of historical per uh, perspective. It is still on the national curriculum. Um, we still read about it. There was that wonderful film that came out um, uh, last year, um, we, where they colorized a lot of the black and white um, photos. It, it was an Imperial War Museum one. I think you can see it on, uh, on YouTube or the Imperial War Museum site. There was also the movie 1917, uh, which, which came out either last year or the year before. Um, so it's still in our consciousness, um, but it is now a, an historical event uh, rather than a, an event of, of, of memory. And one of the reasons why it has stayed, I think, um, in a, a, so important to us is uh, the um, the fact of the 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 brutality and the horror of it. The brutality and the horror have come down to us much more. You read some of the diaries, you see, read some of the recollections. A lot of the troops who served felt it, it, it was glorious uh, that, that notwithstanding the fear, not without, notwithstanding the, the, the suffering that they went through, um, they felt um, ennobled by it. They, they felt exhilarated by it. And, and, and a lot of those emotions have been suppressed um, uh, by history. And, and we tend to focus on the fact of the mud, the gas, the suffering, the fact that in, in, the, in the West, the war in the West, particularly the Western Front, where the trenches were dug uh, between the English Channel and the borders of Switzerland, um, this three and a half, four year war of attrition, um, thousands of lives lost for hundreds of yards of territory, an ebb and flow um, that from um, 1915 right the way through to 1918, um, millions that seem to be sacrificed for, for, for very little gain. One of the other reasons it's come down to us is, is the fact that it did impact nearly all families in, in Britain. There, there were many more British casualties in the Second World in the First World War than there were in the Second World War, more than twice, um, over seven hundred thousand British casualties, um, nearly a million um, uh, from the Empire in total, over one and a half million of them wounded. So you have got many more deaths and um, injured. Uh, more than twice as many more from the First World War uh, as, as the Second World War. And the scale of it still has a power to, to, to shock. So just as an example, um, since World War II, in the 75 years since World War II, there have been 7,000 UK military dead and in the you know Iraq if Afghanistan Malaysia Korea um, Northern Ireland the Falklands 7000 in those um in those 75 years on the 1st of July 1916 the first day of the battle of the Somme 19000 men were killed and and you know, the numbers like that are uh, uh, bring one up short when everyone looks at them um and the commemoration of the deaths 
became an important part of memorializing the war, even while it was going on from, from, from 1914, certainly from 1915 onwards, um, recording these deaths, treating the people as individuals. And this is, this is um, a, a new phenomenon. Um, in, in earlier wars, um, there weren't such great commemorations. Uh, the, uh, there's a, 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 a notable exception, which is the, the Crimea War uh, Memorial, this one here on the right, um, that's in Waterloo Place, just off um, Pall Mall in London. Um, that was erected um, in the 1860s um, to remember the 22,000 um, uh, soldiers who, who, who died during that conflict. And then, Towards the end of the 19th century, the, the wars in South Africa, the, the Boer War um, or Boer Wars, um, there are more memorials there. The, the one on the left is, is to the artillery regiment. That's on the Mall. There is one to the um, um, Carabiniers, which is on, on, uh, just by um, uh, Chelsea Bridge. Um, there are others. Um, uh, around the country. This is the first time that we started um, remembering and the names of the dead, treating these people almost as individuals. But prior to that, um, dead soldiers were, were, were buried in mass graves um, where, where they fell. Um, I, I was listening to a, a fantastic podcast this morning. If you, if you haven't discovered it, it, it already, it's called The Rest is History, and it's um, uh, Tom Holland and Dominic Sandbrook, and they were talking about memorializing um, the First World War, about the, uh, the origins of Remembrance Day, and they mentioned the Battle of Waterloo. There aren't bones found on the fields of Waterloo, um, because one, there was a mass grave, but also um, various sort of, um, um, I don't know how one would regard them, um, but um, uh, fertilizer manufacturers went and collected the bones and they were ground down and they, they fertilized the fields of Yorkshire uh, in, in, the, um, in the late 1810s. Um, you know, the, the, we did not treat um, our um, dead soldiers in the same way that we have in the 20th and the 21st century. Partly that was because it was a small professional army. Um, the other part of it being is that the soldiers were not highly regarded. Um, uh, and and th there was a big change from the Boer War, but particularly in, in the First World War, because in the First World War, um, one, the scale of deaths was so much greater. But we also have an issue that we are dealing with um, a scale of recruitment that was much um, higher. It was important for morale, both for the troops who were fighting and for the people back home, that, they, th th that this fighting was not going to be in vain, that these people ought to be remembered. And we are talking big numbers in, in, in 1914, um, the British Army, including reservists, including territorials, including the Empire troops, was about 700,000. So you know, 10 times bigger than the army we have now, but still compared to the Empire that was spanning a quarter of the globe, not huge. By 1916, two and a half million men had volunteered in England alone, in, in sorry, in, in the United Kingdom alone, in the United Kingdom and, and, and uh, Great Britain and Ireland alone, two and a half million. Um, and, and this is a significant proportion of the, of the population, including the gentleman you see here on, on the left. Um, the, the one here, Harry Milnes, volunteered 10th of August, 1914. This is his um, uh, short service papers. He is signed up for, for three years or the duration uh, as, as it said, he didn't expect the war to last for four years. No one really believed it would be over by Christmas, but they, they did not perhaps think it was going to last so long. Um, volunteered. It was a volunteer army up until 1916 when it was realised that conscription was necessary, that there had to be a forced recruitment. Overall, five and a half million men um, served in, in the forces 
in uh, in the First World War uh, from from Britain and Ireland, another three million from the Empire. So we are talking about huge numbers of people, and this is affecting every town, every village. Um, Harry Milnes, by the way, this guy here, um, uh, August 1914. So um, starts off um, right at the start of the war um, in the um, uh, uh, medical corps um, so would have seen horrors that we can cannot even imagine um, invalided out after Passchendaele in, in 1917 when he, he had a, um, a leg injury and, um, and and pensioned off in in early 1918 and um, he's my granddad so um, lived for another 50 years um, 1968 or 69 he died um, but walked with a stick for the rest of his life after these the, these injuries that, it, that took place and and this is of course not unusual um, you know, virtually everyone in this country has got someone um, who saved served a grandfather a great grandfather great uncle they will have lost people as well and um, just to give you an idea of the scale of that we, we just talk about these things called thankful villages um, these are parishes in England and Wales where no one um, who, from that parish died in the first world war um, and and they became known as the the, the thankful villages um, that um, however many men that they, they, they waved off, they do not have a war memorial with names on it because they all came back. And of the tens of thousands of parishes across the country, there are only 53, 53 thankful villages. So three quarters of a million um, British deaths during the First World War. So every every family you know virtually every town virtually every family was affected in some way and how to memor memorialize this we we are moving away from this this thing of saying that, that there would just be mass graves we, we are moving into um identifying these people of naming them of honoring them um and several decisions were taken um quite early in the war by um, a, um, a, a commission that was sent up that, 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 that later became the Imperial War Graves Commission, now called the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. And um, the two top decisions of these, um, one was a decision not to repatriate. So um, th there, 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 there had been some officers who had fallen um, in the early stages of the war, their families had paid to have their bodies brought back um, and for them to be buried in the family plot or, 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 um, or, or, or in graves closer to home. But there were, a decision was made by the War Graves Commission um, that um, they would be buried where they fell, close to where they fell. So um, initially you, you have um, um, uh, almost makeshift graves uh, to bury people. Um, and then these are consolidated into these bigger grave uh, sites like Tyne Cot, um, which is close to Ypres, where, where the British fought over at least three, maybe four battles, toing and froing right from the start of the war right through to the end. Um, the other decision um, was similar and, and, and from the same motives and motives of sort of egalitarianism is that everyone is being commemorated in the same way, these plain white stones. Uh, so no great memorials, no inputs from the family um, to, 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 to build something bigger, to build something greater, to, to, to honor their lost sons. Um, and it was definitely from an egalitarian philo uh, philosophy. The, 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 the uh, commission came up with um, a phrase within, within that, that those who have given their lives are members of one family, owed an equal tribute of gratitude and affection and equal honor. So a, a conscious decision to honor everyone in the same way. Um, and somewhere like Tyne Cot, and, and you can, um, let's do that, 
go in and, and, and Google it, um, the, the largest of the war ceremonies, uh, ce um, cemeteries and, and, and you know, um, stone after stone after stone um, uh, in ranks, in rows, um, lining up there and more names mentioned in the um, uh, in the walls on the on the side, and that's be because that even in the early 1920s, of the three quarters of a million who died, over a third, I mean nearly 300,000, their bodies had not been found, or rather there was no known grave for them. They were unidentified. Um, in some cases, their bodies had not been found, or they, 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 there was no um, no they, they had. You know, we're talking about a war of artillery. There, there was nothing left to find, essentially. Um, and this is um, something that um, a lot of the uh, people who lost um, sons, husbands, brothers um, in the war found incredibly difficult. They did not get a telegram saying, your son has been killed. They got a telegram saying your son is missing. Um, and that was as good as hearing that they had died, except there was none of this sort of closure um, that, that was necessary. Um, but one of the problems or one of the issues, of course, with having these incredible grave sites um, uh, uh, across Belgium and across France, and and the this is this is land that has been ceded to the British. Um, uh, it, it, it is uh, it is a corner of the foreign field that is forever England. It, it, and they're maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. They are treated as um, as, as 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 British um, land. But one of the issues there is that if you had lost someone, there was no place to mourn, or there was nowhere locally to mourn. Um, there were tours arranged um, from from very soon after the end of hostilities uh, for, for people to go and visit graves, but even the cheapest of those was not cheap um, and, and, and it was not something that 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 people could do on a regular basis. Um, so you you have got this mass death, the three quarters of a million people, you have got people um, whose, whose remains have not been found or their remains have not been identified. Um, uh, and, and it's overseas. So for the people back home, the people who've lost someone, um, there, is no, uh, there is no place to grieve. And, and, and that generated um, a, a wish, a need amongst people um, back home, um, back in Britain, for there to be um, other memorials. And these started springing up quite quickly. And, the, and one of the, the, the more famous of these, um, which, sorry, just excuse me a second while I get back to the presentation, um, was, um, here we go, um, the Cenotaph. Now we, um, or you may know, sorry, let me um, go back. Um, oops, the technology, that's the one I want. That, oops. There we go. Um, we know the Senator for this um, Portland Stone Memorial in, in, in Whitehall um, that has been there uh, for over 100 years. Um, it was not conceived as that. The original Senator, um, and we're looking at some of the images here now, was done in 1919. Um, for what was known as the Peace Parade or the Victory Parade. The, 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 you've got a, a mix of, of, of emotions going on there. It was the, the parade in July 1919 was to celebrate the victory, um, to celebrate the peace. And the memorial was a temporary structure. Um, there had been a parade in Paris. They had had a memorial. Um, the Prime Minister Lloyd George um, thought that that was a splendid idea. Um, the architect um, Edwin Lutyens uh, was um, commissioned to um, to 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 uh, produce something, and the original memorial is made of wood and plaster, and was only ever thought of as being temporary. 
of, of, of being something um, that uh, was was there for the um, for the parade for the 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 event itself. But what happened was is it becomes the focus of grief and mourning. Um, uh, bouquets start to be left uh, by it, and um, uh, if you remember quarter of a century ago the, when um, Princess Diana died and, and reeds were left at Kensington Palace, eventually stretching all the way down to, to uh, Kensington Road, um, a similar thing happened with the cenotaph. After the parade, millions came, flowers were left, they were filling up Whitehall. Um, the structure itself was... Um, starting to look um, a little bit shabby. It, 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 it is wood plaster canvas. Um, and um, there was an announcement by the government that it would be made permanent, um, that a new one would be made. This one was going to be taken down, um, but a new one would be made. And we will come on to that later because that was unveiled um, in 1920, um, the uh, 11th of November, uh, 1920s, so two years after the war, and and it is still the focus um, for um, the sort of national remembrance, as it were. The word cenotaph, by the way, comes from an empty tomb. It, it's Greek for an empty tomb, um, uh, which is what is on top of the structure. Um, the cenotaph is unusual as well amongst a, a lot of remembrance in that there is no religious imagery on it. Um, there are no crosses. Um, there is no sort of um, Christian um, uh, uh, wording on it. The, the, the wording that we have is, and this was apparently a phrase of, um, uh, thought up by Lloyd George, the glorious dead. Um, so its role is specifically to honour the dead and and the symbolism of the empty tomb, um, the 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 dead that we do not know. So it 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 can it it honours any and all um, of 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 the fallen um, of the war. But a little bit more on on that later. Um, what we do see as well through the early nineteen twenties, springing up um, war memorials uh, across the country, every, towns, villages, churches, parishes. Um, this is just one close to me. Um, sorry, let me see if I can go there. Um, Holy Trinity um, at, at Clapham Common. Um, um, the war memorial itself is, is this cross, which is in front of the church. Um, this the church is quite historic. It's where the Clapham sects who were involved in the, the abolition of, of slavery um, met in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And I, I, I've got a photo of this plaque because this is damage caused in the Second World War, you know, history rolling on. These are shrap, uh, fragments of shrapnel that um, blew out the windows and, um, and left these marks in the, um, uh, in, in the commemorative plaque to the Clapham sect. Um, but in the in the porch in front of the church and just round the outside um, are lists of the men, the the young men of the parish who fell. Um, these are the glorious dead, 1914 to 1919, um, the 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 dead of the First World War, um, listed alphabetically. Um, Earlier memorials would have split people out between officers and men, but list, listed out, uh, alphabetically with ranks and medals and and um, uh, and, uh, and their regiments in which they served. Um, and on the wall is the the dead, um, the old boys of of a local school, Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. The the it is sweet and right to die for one's country. The what one. Um, uh, the, the, the phrase um, speared by Wilfred Owen in, in, his, um, uh, in his poem um, uh, called Dolce Decorum Est. Um, and uh, it's not a particularly um, um, uh, good photos here, but you, if, if, if your screen is bigger, you will notice within, um, within this names reappearing. And in, in, in fact, here we've got um, 
three brothers, the Burley brothers, um, three, three of them, I think three out of four brothers uh, died. Um, different regiments, I think one was, was in the Navy and, 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 and two were in Army regiments, uh, but they were, um, they all died um, over, over the period of the war. And go to any British village, go into any church, um, and you will see war memorials like this, and you will see lists of names, and you will frequently see names repeated of, 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 of brothers or people from the same family who, who, who did it. There, there were also other commemorations made. Um, you have got, oops, jumping around here. Um, you have got um, from, from workplaces. Um, so um, uh, th this is the Prudential Insurance um, Memorial um, in, um, in Hoban, several hundred names of it. These are the staff of, of, of Liberties, Liberty, the, the department store, um, who, um, uh, who went off and served and, and did not come back from the First World War. Uh, there's another plaque underneath it from those in the Second World War and, and a third plaque of those um, who were killed in air raids in, in, in the Second War. Um, these are men from, from the Young's Brewery. So these are all sort of uh, uh, quite close. And, and, and you will see it, it go into um, uh, older buildings, particularly railway stations, going to, 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 to Waterloo Station. Um, they, they are, the names of the dead are on plaques as you go up through the... the um, the stairs there and there is a thing called the victory arch across the the top of that that commemorates it um also around london you have got regimental um uh, memorials um this is one in hoban um so just at the just at the start of the city of london um the 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 foot of um grazing road um and it's a memorial to the royal fusiliers um a a, a london regiment um, of the time, um, uh, the the um, the sergeant um, uh, guarding uh, the uh, the entrance to the city. Um, there he is on the left. It's a, a two point six meter bronze statue by a, a sculptor called um, Albert Toft. Um, and and again, look at the numbers: twenty two thousand of them um, who who died in the war and you can see on the back the various battalions um, these are all or most of these battalions were, were what's known as the kitchener battalions he was the secretary of state for war um, when war broke out and um, these are the volunteers these are the volunteer battalions and one of the ways in which people were recruited was through things that became known as Powell's battalions. Um, these could be based on area, they could be based on interests, they could be based on um, uh, different occupations. Um, so you would sign up with people you worked with or people who were in the same town as you are. So particularly in the north of England, you have got lots of Powell's battalions based around the towns. The, the young men would march off to the recruiting offices together and sign up. Here, the, um, the Fusiliers, they had one of their big recruitments in the, in the, in the dried out moat of the Tower of London. Um, and people are generally done by um, occupation. So you've got the, the stockbrokers battalion at the top here, 1600 men who worked for stockbrokers firms um, signed up, um, recruited together um, uh, to, to, to serve in a battalion together. Four battalions of, 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 of um, men who'd, who'd been at public schools. So, um, you know, signing up with, with, with friends, with school chums. Um, they lived in Kensington. They were sportsmen. They played cricket. You know, they played football together. You, you have got cyclists battalions, the, the artists rifles um, who were um, did exactly what they said. They, they were artists, um, but they went and signed up. Or here you've got the bankers and um, uh, the 26th battalion of, 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 of bankers, um, bank clerks, people who worked in, in banks in the city of London um, of in that battalion, 2,700 men served, 700 of those died 
and yeah again what, what's what's that more than a quarter uh, of, of 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 them died um during um during the 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 conflict and that was one of the issues with um the powell's battalions that they served together they died together so you are having um regiments you are having towns that lose huge numbers of their young men because they are they were recruited together they they volunteered together and that bound them together those sort of ties of friendship but when they went into the line together um the the, the town lost a, a an unhealthy proportion of its young men um because they were um they were all in the firing line together um so um we have got the the the, the parish records the churches we've got the firms we've got regimental records another um regiment um and moving it on um to a slightly higher degree um the machine gun gun corps um this is on hyde park corner so there is a traffic island in, in hyde park corner um it's got the wellington arch in it it's just over the road from from apsley house which is the duke of wellington's old home and that is a little sort of um um uh, almost a little sort of pantheon there is the australian war memorial the new zealand war memorial the artillery war memorial which will come on on to a second and this quite bizarre one um the uh, for the machine gun corps um it, it's by a sculptor called francis derwent wood um 1925 um the 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 bronze and it's a statue of david with his sword um 170,000 men served in the machine gun corps um of those 14,000 were killed 50,000 wounded again these huge numbers you know we're talking in tens of thousands we're always rounding it up in terms of the numbers who who, who were killed um it seems strange that he should have this beautiful young man as as the the um as as the image that that goes forward and and you can see a, a, a version of this and a, another version in in chelsea um on the chelsea embankment um but there are two reasons for it one is slightly less obvious and that is that um uh derwent wood was was very involved with um um treating men who had been disfigured um in in the war particularly facial di dis di dis di disfigurement and 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 he he was using his sculpting skills to try and rebuild faces or try and rebuild sort of masks or or or, or, or things it was known as the the, the tin noses shop um um with that sort of um, um rather brutal sort of serviceman's humor um and it's thought that perhaps um derwent wood is using this sort of image of perfectibility uh, uh, showing um showing what has been lost or or, or, or what the consequences uh, might be um the other aspect of it is um marking it are, are a couple of the the vickers machine guns that that um uh that was the uh used by the british army at the time there is a um a story i don't know how true it is no one's established it for 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 fact that these are actual machine guns that have been bronzed um there seems to be no evidence for it but it's a it's a persistent story that these are actual machine guns that have been bronzed rather than just be bronze sculptures of it um but the the other reason for it and this is this is one of the the most chilling of the the um um uh, sentences on any any war memorial and and you can see it here at the foot of the war memorial there's david this is the plinth and this is the plinth that it's on um that um uh, saul hath slain his thousands but david his tens of thousands so it is an allusion to the the utter destructiveness um of the machine gun um, of of the fact that during most of the first world war the advantage was to the defenders that the guys with the machine guns um 
um, you do not need that many of them to be able to wipe out hundreds and thousands of men who are advancing um, towards you. Um, it is a war, it was a war of defensive superiority, both in things like the trenches, having to storm um, an enemy that is dug in with machine guns and particularly the, the millions of shells um, that were fired on both sides, the, the constant bombardment, and particularly um, whenever there was an offensive, the huge numbers, and, and we are talking millions of shells that were fired over, over a period of days um, while a big offensive was going on to try and blow the wire, the, the, the barbed wire that was there in no man's land, to try and destroy the, um, uh, the, the machine gun em uh, emplacements, to try and get the enemy um, hiding in their trenches so that when your assault troops got there, uh, they were softened up from the, the bombardment and you could capture that territory. Um, and as we know from, from the history, it, it, it often did not work like that. So that first day of the Somme that was mentioned before, there, there, tons of, 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 of ordnance had been fired towards the German lines, but it wasn't accurate enough. So the, the soldiers had been ordered to walk rather than run across no man's land. They came across the wire that hadn't been destroyed. The time that it took gave the Germans time enough to get out of their, their more secure trenches, set up their machine guns and mow down these men who were advancing towards them. At, at, at times, the, the, the thing that stopped the Germans was their machine guns overheating from the, 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 the thousands of bullets uh, that they were sent, sending towards these lines of men walking towards them. Yeah. It, 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 it does not bear thinking about the horrors of that. Um, and the memorial to the artillery who played such a huge part in this is, well, for me uh, personally, one of the greatest um, bits of, of, of public art um, uh, that we have in London. It, 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 is, it is right next to that one of the Machine Gun Corps. It is this huge stone and 9.2 inch howitzer, a massive great gun, um, a, an immense work in, 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 in all definitions of, 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 of the word by um, um, an artist called um, Charles Sergeant Jagger, um, uh, won the military cross, so he served, he knew knew of, of what he was creating. He, he served in the artist's rifles, in fact. He was one of these artists who had signed up, who, who had volunteered um, to go and save. Um, commissioned in 1925, um, bronze figures around it and, and, and Portland stone, um, uh, um, plinth and, and, and carvings upon that. Um, various figures around the outside for um, for um, soldiers, um, you have here a, a, a carrier. Um, this one is a, a driver, um, and I think in, in those days a lot of the artillery was still being pulled by horses, um, and an officer. Um, the battle honours, you can see the the where they the the the, the fields of battle that they they served um, are, are are there. Um, uh, Mark and and then the most controversial part of it that 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 met a lot of resistance. Um, there is a, a quote around it from from um, uh, from Henry V from Shakespeare. Um, Here was a royal fellowship of death, and it is a war memorial that has got a dead soldier um, um, there, covered in his great coat. Um, with his helmet on it. And, and, and the commission that was in charge of erecting this um, met a, a certain amount of, of, of resistance and Jagger insisted. He said, if I'm going to do this, th I, this has to be in it. Um, and if you won't 
fund it. I will pay for this out of my own money um, to, to have this, this fourth figure here. He felt it so important that this is not a celebration um, of, of the victory. It is a memorial um, to the fallen. And if you're going to have a memorial to the fallen, here it is. Here is here is a representation of that, and and it is a, um, as I say, a, a stunning piece of work. If, if, even moving from the bronzes, take time if if you're ever there to go around and have a look at the the sculptures, the freezers um, of of the the troops there. Here is one carrying a, a wounded comrade um, uh, back to safety, um, and. The, the detailing these these were made on um, um, in clay molds and, and and then cast in bronze. This is the hand of the of the dead man. His boots, his putties, um, a, a helmet lying there. I, it, it moves me each time I see it. And um, one of the things that I, I only noticed when when really wandering around, um, there is um, an image here. There's a, a, a Christ and a, a Madonna and, and and it's not uh, talking before about the cenotaph having no religious symbolism the religious symbolism isn't there front and center this is a, um, um, a, a representation of a representation it, it, it is in a in, in a, a, a destroyed um, uh, it, it is showing the, the the ruins that have been caused uh, by um, by the uh, by the artillery artillery and um, uh, but within that preserved is is a is an image of a of of, uh, of a Madonna and child um, perhaps to give some sort of feeling of hope or feeling of, of, of redemption and salvation from it. Um, there's another fantastic um, uh, Jagger sculpture. Um, this is another one of those company memorials. This is uh, to the um, uh, men from the Great Western Railway who had uh, who, who had lost their lives in the conflict, and it's in Paddington Station. Uh, it's called Letters from Home, and there's a guy in his uniform, his great coat, his scarf. It's winter, and, and he's being consoled by um, reading the letter that he's been sent from home, and 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 again, an incredibly. Um, powerful work um, uh, and um, uh, Jagger um, died in his 40s possibly before he, he could have created some fantastic um, uh, uh, other works um, you can see some of his um, uh, non-military um, sculptures in the VNA they've, they've got a couple of, of, of um, um, sort of erotic sort of modernist um freezers that he did uh, as, as as private commissions and and uh, a wonderful sculptor who 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 died far too far too early um so there are other um uh, memorials quite close to one of the things that that, that was not really memorialized uh, or, or or paid sufficient attention to was um the um uh, the men from what we would have called the empire um, or, or what we would call the, the Commonwealth these days. Um, not so much um, the white Commonwealth, but the, um, the, the people of color, the, the regiments that were recruited from Africans, particularly from the Indian subcontinent. A million and a half um, were served in World War One, in in a in a essentially European war, in essentially an imperial war, um, and these memorial gates, which are at the uh, top of Constitution Hill, um, weren't unveiled until two thousand and two, uh, and 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 it, it took us really that long to commemorate them, um, and within these sort of little pavilions, um, there are. Um, the the winners of, of the Victoria Cross named, which is our, the, the the British highest um, military honour for valour, uh, the Bronze Cross, um, and um, there are twenty three Victoria Crosses um, given to um, uh, members of, of Indian res uh, regiments um, during uh, the First World War. Many more given in the Second World War, and and it, it took us 
what 90 years um, or certainly 80 years after the um, end of the First World War to um, uh, to even make an attempt to to um, uh, commemorate um, the, uh, the the sacrifices of, of um, uh, those from the empire who were uh, were recruited or who volunteered uh, to, to 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 fight for quotes the mother country. Um, and then we move back on to the cenotaph, which we were um, uh, talked about before. So the the original um, uh, cenotaph wood and canvas um, replaced um, uh, in 1920. So it had become this focus for, for, for national mourning and still is. It is still where the Remembrance Parade um, happens each Remembrance Sunday, the second Sunday in November. So the, the one coming up this Sunday. Um, it's where the wreaths are, are, are laid by the royal family, by the politicians, by the military, by the, um, the foreign dignitaries, um, and it's where the veterans march past. Um, um, these days, the veterans tend to be ve veterans of more recent conflicts. Um, as I said, there are no World War I veterans left. The Second World War veterans are now all in their 90s. Uh, or beyond and, and, and are, are generally being wheeled past rather than marching past their numbers fewer every year. It is, if you like, a, um, a, a secular focus um, uh, for, for the nation. Um, there is no religious imagery on it. You have got the empty tomb still, the cenotaph, the, um, the, the laurel wreaths, which were laurel wreaths on the um, original one, were sculpted. In fact, done by Derwent Wood, who did the um, Machine Gun Corps memorial that we were talking about. Um, and this, this, this solid um, uh, Portland stone memorial um, that is um, uh, one of the most in the broader sense, sacred spots uh, in in um, in the in the British consciousness. Um, here are um, Lutchens' plans for it. This is um, the, um, how um, it, it was back in the 1920s when the 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 wreaths of flowers uh, are being um, uh, laid on it. It has been added to since because you've got there 1919. They have put. 1939 to 45 on there now to commemorate the, the, the deaths of uh, the dead in, in, in both wars. Um, and it was unveiled on the 11th of November 1920, so the, the second Armistice Day, um, uh, the, the, a, a day that was designed as, as, as a, um, a focal point for um, national commemoration. Um, it was also the day where we we have the ceremony that buried the unknown warrior. And this is 1920, an Imperial War Museum photo. The king is about to unveil um, the new cenotaph, the permanent cenotaph. But before that, he, military honours are being paid to the body of the unknown warrior um, that has been brought on a gun carriage the two minute silence is about to be held. The unveiling will then take place and then the uh, body of the unknown warrior will be taken into Westminster Abbey um, and, and, and buried. And the story of the unknown warrior is a, a, a it, it, it is a, a quite a wonderful one, rich in symbolism and, and gets us back to that sense that we were talking about at the beginning of, of, of there being no, um, no place for many of those who had lost family uh, to grieve, um, that either the body had not been found um, or it was overseas. And the idea came from a um, British Army chaplain, um, someone called the Reverend David Railton, um, who had been um, serving throughout the war. Um, and in um, August 1920, so very close to this, so we, we, we're talking just a few months before this, uh, he, he wrote to the Dean of, of Westminster Abbey, uh, uh, Dean Ryle, um, with this idea that a, a, a archetypical body, a, 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 a random body ought to be buried 
so that that could be the place that um, those who, who, who wished to remember a loved one could honour, um, and that this body would be honoured as the national hero to represent all of the dead and to represent particularly all of the dead whose, whose graves were not known. And he, he writes to, to um, the Dean of Westminster Abbey, who thinks it's a great idea. He did, the Dean of Westminster Abbey um, introduces the idea to Lloyd George, the Prime Minister, and King George V. Lloyd George is all for it. King George less so because he thinks um, this, uh, th that we may, we should not be reopening wounds that that perhaps had started to heal, but he he, he is convinced of uh, of the idea of it, um, and this becomes part of this remembrance this first Remembrance Day service, um, the week before or a few days before um, for. Well, the stories vary. The, the, the official thing is that there's four. There, there was someone there who said there were five bodies, even someone who said there were six. But let's go with the official history that there were four bodies taken from four different um, um, battlefields, all, 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 all dead who, who um, um, were, were unknown. Um, we, are, we are talking at this stage, you know, a, a collection of bones, essentially, um, from the four um, battlefields of the Somme, Ain, Ypres, and Arras. Um, they were brought together into one room, and the um, commanding officer of the British went in there and, and, and put his hand on one coffin at random. That became the unknown warrior. The other three were buried, buried with full military honours. This unknown um, uh, corpse was then put into an oak coffin and the oak taken from wood um, that had been chopped down in, in the grounds of Hampton Court Palace. There was a crusader's sword, or, well some stories say crusader's sword from, from the Tower of London, others say it's a 16th century sword that came from George V's collection, but whatever, there, there is a regal sword that is, that is placed with the, uh, with the body. Um, it is um, um, taken to Boulogne. Um, there is a, a, a procession two miles long, given full military honours by the French. It is saluted by Marshal Foch, the, the head of the French army, as it is put ab aboard the, um, the destroyer HMS Verdun, taken over to Dover, put on a special train. The top of the carriage that it's in is painted white, and it is taken from Dover to Victoria Station and, 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 and people gather on the bridges, throwing flowers down onto, onto the roof of this carriage as it goes past. It, 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 it lies overnight of the 10th and the 11th um, at Victoria Station with a guard of honour. It is then taken, and there you see it on the gun carriage, um, from Victoria up to Hyde Park Corner, down the Mall, um, along to Whitehall, where it's come here for the, um, uh, uh, for the unveiling of, of the cenotaph. And it is then taken slowly, walking pace, the king walking behind it, the pallbearers being the, uh, the heads of the armed forces, um, walked to Westminster Abbey, um, where it is, there is a guard of honour um, of a um, uh, hundred, uh, Victoria Cross winners, and the guests of honour are women who had lost their husbands and all of their sons during the conflict. Yeah, and, and that cracks me up every time. You know, they, they, there were probably um, a hundred of those women there. You know, again, gives you a, a sense of the the, the huge loss um, that that took place, um, and it is buried. Um, right by the west entrance. Um, it is the spot that no one walks on. Um, it, as I say, an, an oak coffin. Um, soil from France had been brought over for George V to scatter onto the coffin and a, a, a slab of Belgian marble um, laying across the top of it. Um, this 
spark the idea of, 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 of there being other tombs of unknown warriors and unknown, unknown soldiers. So the, the, the um, unknown soldier um, in Arlington um, um, was inspired by this. The, the French unknown soldier um, was, was buried the, the subsequent year um, in, in Paris um, and is still a focus um, uh, two of the things that, that 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 happen is, of course, if there are any sort of foreign dignitaries, heads of state come, they come and pay their respects at uh, the tomb of the unknown warrior, um, and at royal weddings, the flowers or the bouquet, the bride's bouquet, is sent back and, and left on the grave because when uh, the queen mother Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, when she married um, Bertie, the, the the future George the sixth. As she left Westminster Abbey, um, she left her, her bouquet um, on, uh, on the stone here to um, commemorate her brother um, who had been killed in, in the Great War, in the First World War. And that has become a tradition. So um, um, uh, Kate Middleton's flowers were sent back, even Meghan Markle's, even though the wedding took place at, at, um, at Windsor. Uh, the flowers were sent back from from Windsor and 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 left on it, and there is this inscription on it: um, the the body of a Br British warrior, unknown by name or rank, brought from France to lie amongst the most illustrious of the land. Um, and incredibly powerful, and does still what it was intended to do it is representative of all the unknown dead um as well as um the the half a million who whose graves are, that that we do know um a a a, a um a representation um of um of of, of the loss and the suffering um uh, uh, and and something for us to uh, particularly on the 11th of November, um, uh, uh, another reason for us to keep remembering. So I think that's, yes, that's it. So I shall get out of that and I shall stop the share if I can get my mouse to work. There we go. Um, so um, as I say, I, I, I'll send you a link to the recording of this um, tomorrow so that um, those of you who, who um, um, might want to see it again or, 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 or um, um, uh, missed any of it um, can, um, can, can catch up on it. Um, so just quickly, just see if there are any um, questions. Uh, if you, if you um, got perfect timing, one, one minute past eight. I'm, I, I usually overrun like sort of 10 or 15 minutes whenever I do one of these things. So um, I always like to applaud myself when I'm um, actually bang on time. So, um, um, does anyone have any questions? If, 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 if so, just sort of um, pop them into chat um, or unmute yourself and, and, um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and ask them. Um, I don't know how many of you are, are, are close to London, but um, the, the war memorials that we have, I think, I think I've got a little map somewhere of, of, of some of the, some other war memorials. It's a, another one of my sort of ongoing projects of, um, um creating little maps of, of of things in in google maps so i shall try and dig that out and send that with the link tomorrow so that you um you can see where some of these memorials and and some of the other ones are should you want to go on a on a memorial walk uh in uh, in london at any point no questions everyone's um everyone's wanting their supper instead so, well, um... we've had ours. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Don, we'd like to just ask where, where you said the artillery yes. memorial was, please. That's at Hyde Park Corner. So oh. um, aim for Hyde Park Corner Tube. Yes. It, it, it's in that bit of the, 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 the traffic island um, in the yes. middle of Hyde Park yes. Corner, the, the underpass. House that. And, uh... that, that, that's right. There's an underpass to get to it. And um, I, I mean, it, 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 it's a... It's, like I say, it's an immense piece of work in 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 mm. all senses. I think so. You know, it, it's a. Were there were there any to the Royal Navy and the Merchant Navy? Yes, the there. Well, the Royal Navy's got um, a big one in in um, 
uh, in Plymouth um, and, and others and, and um, individual members of the Royal Navy are mentioned in, in things like that um, uh, uh, Clapham um, Church um, uh, list of war memorials that I saw. There is a, 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 a Merchant Navy one um, on Tower Hill, yes. the Merchant Marine Memorial. Uh, in two parts. One is the um, First World War, and then there's a more open one for, for, for the Second World War. And that lists the tens of thousands who, as, as they say, ha have no grave but the sea. Mm. You know, the, the, uh, the, um, the young men who, who died in, in, in the Merchant Marine, who, who went down with their, their, their ships um, mm. during both, both of the wars. And again, a, a very fast. powerful um, memorial, you know, just being confronted by this plaque after plaque of names. Mm. Um, I, I think there are 40,000 from the Second World War, fewer from the first, I think 25, 30,000 from the first, but a good 40,000 in, in, in names in the Second World War. And that's Tower Hill tube. It, it yes, literally so I can visualise it now. Of London, mm. but, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you all very much. Um, I will, um, uh, and um, thank you to Romy for her for for for, for her her comment. And um, yes, and and um, I will um, hopefully see you all um, shortly. As I say, Leo's doing historic houses are very different um, next. Uh, Monday the 15th, I'm doing uh, next Thursday uh, Americans in, in, um, in London, America, Memorials to Americans. Uh, and on the 28th, I'm doing um, Oxford University Legends and Traditions, which oh, is yes. um, um, considerably more lighthearted than this. I will tell you all about <laughs> the, um, the Mallard ceremony and the Merton time ceremony and New Colleges Mint Julep Night and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, I, I will hopefully see you, some of you um, at, 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 at those, and um, we're, we're about to try and put some more dates down for, for, for a couple of weeks in, in December as well. So um, um, emails will be will be received in all the best inboxes over the next few weeks on those. So thank you very much. Thank thanks for your time, and um, let me um, stop recording and. Um,